What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're not going to be talking about any, well we're not going to be talking about any free agents that Detroit Lions could bring in or you know really what to expect from players that are on the roster. Today we're going to be talking about the NFL's top 100 list. Now if you do not know the NFL's top 100 list is a list of the top 100 NFL players voted on by coaches and the players themselves and it's something the NFL does every year. It's an annual tradition at this point and you know people like to look at the list and critique it and that's what we're going to do today as there were zero Detroit Lions on this list nobody not a single soul from the Detroit Lions organization even grazed this list and that is so ridiculous to me because it's really because the Detroit Lions haven't had team success like there are good players on this roster there are guys that work their butt off and are the best of the best at their position in the NFL and they don't get recognition because they're the Detroit Lions and it's not the it's not just the Lions you know I don't think there were any Bengals on there I don't think there were any Redskins on there there was like one giant and it was Saquon Barkley like these bad teams aren't getting recognition even though they have very good players they have guys that are contributing and you know are at the top of the league at their respective position and they're not getting respect so today we're going to be going over three Detroit Lions that 100% should have been on this list and you know that will be on this list in the future 100% or at least should be before we do get into the video if you are new to the channel and are enjoying the content consider going over to, or consider going down and hitting the like and subscribe button it takes two seconds out of video to make mine and i'd be very very appreciative to everybody that chooses to do so and while you're at it go down in the link in the description go to my second channel and subscribe to that too as i come out with daily highlight videos of players teams and all things football but with that being said let's get in and talk about the three detroit lines that should 100 percent have made this top 100 list <laughs> Now this list as I'm doing it is in no particular order. These are just the three guys I think. It's not, you know, I'm not necessarily going to rank them as far as, you know, where they should be in the list or I'm not going to rank them against each other, but these guys do deserve to be on opposed to some of the other guys. So we'll start with Frank Rag, now the center for the Detroit Lions. First off, I just want to say this guy is the most underrated center in the NFL. This guy gets no recognition and he is one of the he is one of the best centers in the NFL and doesn't get recognition cuz he plays for the Detroit Lions. And the Detroit Lions by themselves had a very very underrated offensive line last year and Frank Ragnow was a huge part of that. Now there was only one other center to make the NFL top 100 and that was Jason Kelsey at the 94th spot, the center for the Philadelphia Eagles. He was the only other center to make it on the NFL top 100 and you know the NFL top 100 generally is more skill positions. It's more quarterback, receivers, running back, DBs, linebackers, you know defensive linemen. The offensive line doesn't usually get a lot of love for that unless you're a flashy guy that you know gets huge hits and you know just devastating blocks but you know so not a lot of offensive linemen get on there which is why I think Frank Ragnow wasn't on there but if you compare the two stats between Jason Kelsey and Frank Ragnow they're very very similar now in the 2019 season Jason Kelsey played in 1163 offensive snaps for the Philadelphia Eagles committed three penalties and gave up two sacks in the 2019 season for the Detroit Lions Frank Ragnow had or played in 996 offensive snaps for the Detroit Lions, gave up five penalties and two sacks. So, I mean, they're very similar. Both players only give up two sacks. Now, granted, Jason Kelsey did play a little bit more than Frank Ragnow, but they're both very elite center prospects. They're both they're both right there at the top of the NFL at, you know, what they do and they are the best at it. There are not too many centers in the NFL better than Frank Ragnow and I think if they did involve more offensive linemen, Frank Ragnow, he wouldn't have been on there cuz he plays for the Detroit Lions and nobody respects us, but he should have been looking at the stats and looking at that if they added any more offensive linemen, he had to be the next one on there and he I think he deserves to be at the bottom of this list, probably around the 100 to 95 range. I don't think he should be too high cuz once again, you know, the list is more it's more concentrated around skill players and skill positions, but Frank Ragnow deserves his love and definitely deserved to be on the top 100. Now, getting on to Matthew Stafford. Now, Matthew Stafford was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL last year why he was playing. Matt, I mean, obviously he did get hurt, which I think is a big reason they're saying he's not on. But a, cu a couple of years ago when Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone, he was still in like the top 20. He played in not he played in like seven games and he was in the top twenty, which is ridiculous. And you're telling Matthew Stafford with his elite efficiency last year couldn't make it on the top one hundred after playing eight games, more games than Aaron Rodgers played in his injured season. No, the injury doesn't count. You can't tell me that he can't be on there because of injury because you guys put Aaron Rodgers on there after he played seven games and had a much worse season than Matthew Stafford had last year. Now the quarterbacks to make it on the list ahead of Matthew Stafford include Kyler Murray at the number ninety spot. 
Josh Allen at the 87th spot, Ryan Tannehill at the 68th spot, Kirk Cousins at 58, Dak Prescott at 46, Jimmy Garoppolo at 43, Deshaun Watson at 20, Aaron Rodgers at 16, Tom Brady at 14, Drew Brees at 12, and then Mahomes, Lamar, and Russell Wilson are all in the top 10, and as I mentioned, those are yet to be disclosed. Now, so those are some pretty big names, especially at the top that Matthew Stafford has to compete with. But when you look at the stats, when you look at what they did at, from a game-by-game -game basis, because that's the fairest way to compare them, as Matthew Stafford only played in half the games, and, you know, we could say, yeah, double the stats, and that's how you do it. But I'm just going by a game-by-game -game basis. What did they do every single game? What do they average per game? And that is how, or these are the stats that I looked at the most, because I thought those were the, the most fair to compare. Now, one player on the top 100 list, one quarterback on the top 100 list had more passing yards or yeah, had more yards per completion than Matthew Stafford. And that was Ryan Tannehill who played, who played just over half the season. Now, nobody on this list had more passing yards per game. The only, the only NFL player to have more passing yards per game than Matthew Stafford last year was Jameis Winston, and obviously he did not make the top 100 either. Now, Matthew Stafford was also top five in QBR versus man coverage, zone coverage, and blitz. And Matthew Stafford's wide receivers when he was playing had the least separation of any wide receiver court in the NFL. As, you know, I think we've talked about it before. He's the most aggressive quarterback in the NFL because he has to be because his wide receivers get so little separation that he needs to be aggressive. He needs to throw in tight windows. And he was, he was still top five in all QBR. Th he was all... He was still top five in QBR against man zone and the blitz. He was still he still had the most passing yards per game and still had the most yards per completion in the NFL. Or he was second in yards per completion in the NFL. And like if you look at those stats, like how are you gonna tell me that Kyler Murray, Josh Allen, Ryan Tannehill, Kirk Cousins, Dak Prescott, Jimmy Garoppolo, how are you gonna tell me those guys are better than Matthew Stafford when they didn't even come close to sniffing those kind of stats? They didn't even come close to, you know, anything like that. Jimmy Garoppolo and Dak Prescott get carried by the running game. You could put Kirk Cousins and Ryan Tannehill in there. Josh Allen has a big arm, but that was more the defense carrying them to wins. And Kyler Murray was the offensive rookie of the year, but he's down at 90. And you're not going to convince me that that Kyler Murray is better than Matthew Stafford at this point because he's not. Matthew Stafford is an elite quarterback. He's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, if not a top five. And the fact that he got left off this list simply because of injuries is the one of the most disrespectful things that I've ever seen from Matthew Stafford. And he's been disrespected a lot throughout his career. Now, the number one player or the number one Detroit Lion that should have been on the top 100 list, y'all know who it is. It's Matt Patricia's golf cart. No, nah, I'm just playing. Shout out to Tom Grassi for that comment. That was funny last night on the DSA roundtable. But seriously, it's of course Kenny Galladay. This guy was a monster last year. This guy led the NFL in touchdowns, had so many mind-blowing stats while playing with a backup quarterback. And, you know, just the fact that he got put behind some of these receivers just hurts my head. So looking at all of the wide receivers that made the top 100, we have Allen Robinson at 93, Cooper Cup at 89, DK Metcalf at 81, Keenan Allen at 77, Larry Fitzgerald at 69, Tyler Lockett at 65, Jarvis Landry at 61, OBJ at 59, Devontae Adams at 57, Stephon Diggs at 54, Amari Cooper at 49, Chris Godwin at 38, Mike Evans at 30, Tyree Kill at 22, Julio Jones at 11, and then D-Hop and Michael Thomas are both in the top 10. So, obviously the top end of that is very competitive, right? You got D-Hop, you got Mike Evans, you got Julio Jones, Tyree Kill, the big four that most people would put as their top four receivers in the NFL. Fair enough, he didn't make the top 22. But, I mean, if you compare him to all these receivers, if you put Kenny Galladay's stats against up against every single person on the top 100 list, four wide receivers on the list had more receiving yards than Kenny Galladay. Four guys on this list. Out of the 17 wide receivers on the top 100 list for the NFL's top 100, four of them had more receiving yards than Kenny Galladay. Nobody had more receiving touchdowns than Kenny Galladay. Two players averaged more yards per target than Kenny Galladay, and 14 players. 14 of the 17 players on this list had more catches and more targets than Kenny Galladay. So Kenny Galladay did more than everybody with less opportunity. And he did it with a backup quarterback and arguably some of the worst quarterback play in the NFL for half the season. And you're going to tell me he's not a top 100 player in the NFL. You're going to tell me Kenny Galladay is not a top 17 wide receiver. W no. Kenny Galladay got disrespected. He's the most disrespected player right now in the NFL. I'm sure there are other players on other teams that get disrespected all the time, but right now... 
Kenny Galladay is the most disrespected player. Do not be on this list right now. And I will argue with anybody in the comments. This guy is better. Kenny Galladay is better than Cooper Cub. He's better than Allen Robinson. He's definitely better than DK Metcalf and Larry Fitzgerald and Tyler Lockett right now. I mean, I could argue that you should put Kenny Galladay based on just the stats. You could put Kenny Galladay in the top 25 players in the NFL. And the fact that he didn't even make the top 100 is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like, do these people even look at stats? Do they look at anything? Or do they just think, oh, yeah, Lions, 3-12-1, eh, not very good, must not have any superstars, must not have anybody that's good. Like, what do you mean Kenny Galli is not a top 100 player in the NFL? Like, that, that is ridiculous to me. But, you know, with that being said, the Detroit Lions are always being disrespected. It's going to continue to happen until we win football games, and hopefully that's what we start doing this year. But with that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to put that out there that these players are so disrespected. And, you know, today and the last couple days they've been put on the list is just more fuel to add to the fire and more ammunition to argue that these guys are the most underrated franchise and the most underrated players in the NFL. Let me know. Well, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you think all three of these guys should have made the list? How many of these, and if not, how many of them do you think should have made the list? Do you think Kenny, do you think Stafford, do you think Ragnar, or do you think anybody else on the Detroit Lions should have made the top 100 list? Let me know that get out. Let me know that down in the comments below. And if anybody wants to argue that Kenny Galladay is not a top 100 wide receiver, I'll debate you 100% because I'm gonna win. But. Now, with that being said, that is all for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. As I said at the beginning, make sure you go down and make sure you go down and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Helps me out. Takes two seconds every day. And while you're at it, go over to my second channel, Right or Wrong Productions, and go sub to that channel too. As I'm working really hard putting out two to three highlight videos a day of draft prospects right now. And as soon as I know what the draft prospects, I'll be moving over to moving over to teams and divisions. So go over and check that out. Subscribe to the channel, and you know it helps me out makes my day but with that being said hope you guys enjoy the video hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see all of you in the detroit lions video tomorrow as always the detroit lions are the most disrespected team in the nfl i'll see all of you guys tomorrow bye